This is an introduction to future internet architectures. If you talk about future internet architectures, we should think about what is the internet today and how is, does it work. The internet itself is a connection or is a network of networks. It's um, different devices, millions and billions of devices interconnected using the same internet protocol as their glue. If you think about the internet today, it has already become a vital part of our life for business as well as for private. If you think about all the applications of which we have, it is the business applications, business, business communications, sales, orders, we do via the internet, we do emailing, we have voice over IP video conferencing, we do all the advertisements. This is part of our, business, of our business life and the business to business communication is an um, essential part of today's um, economy. In the private life, the internet also plays a big role. We talk about emails, we have chat applications, we do voice over IP video conferencing, we do shopping via the internet, we have our social networks, online gaming, and we also watch TV via the internet using the internet protocol. If you think about what happened over the last decade or so, um, we see that a rapid development has occurred already. When we talked about mobile communications, just as an example, in the early 2000s, um, we saw the first time that we had more mobile phones than we have uh, fixed line phones. That was in 2001, where the, the blue line crosses the green line. Over the years, we have something like a worldwide penetration of mobile phones with 95.5%. This, of course, means that some people have more than one mobile phone or mobile phone subscription, but we have more or less all the um, world population covered with a mobile phone subscription. Even in the developing countries, we have 70 to 80% of population um, statistically with a mobile phone subscription. That was done over the, the um, this um, from 15% to something like 95% was done over only 15 years. If we look at the second thing, which is very exciting over the years, is um, the people which have um, internet access. It grows slowly from something like 8% in 2001 to something like 40% in 2014. If you see what happened with mobile broadband access, so people using the internet, using mobile communications, um, it started with something in 2007 with the first um, iPhones, iPads coming in um, up to 30% in, in late 2014. So we see that this development will rapidly grow further and we will see that the um, internet access from mobile websites, from mobile devices will be much more than from fixed devices already starting today. If you see the speed of the development that in something like seven to eight years, we go from zero to 30% of world population equipped with something new devices, we also see that for internet usage, we don't really know what will be happening. So if you see at today's traffic, we have something like 250 billion emails transferred every day. We had something like 1 billion websites, 700 active top-level domains, at least 1 billion YouTube videos watched every day. So this video um, um, is one of the major applications, the main traffic source in the internet today. But on the other side, we see that already more than 2.5 billion photos are uploaded on Facebook every year. So what we see here is that we have an excitingly high traffic demand already today, and we see that um, we see a change from emails, um, web applications, YouTube video downloading to some kind of uploading of um, photos and videos to um, social media. The question then is, of course, where does the journey lead to, and particularly if you want to talk about future internet architectures. We see that we have more and more mobility. We, are, we have this idea of always being connected, always best connected for decades, but it's coming, becoming reality. So being able um, to communicate anywhere is getting more and more important. We see that with the iPhones, the smartphones, the um, tablet computers, we want to have all the access what we need um, online every time. That is something which we see, but it does not change or we can't um, do dramatic changes in the network topology and architectures from now to the future because we already have 30% of world population equipped with mobile devices and using broadband communications. The second trend which we see, and it's getting much more intensive in the, in the future, is machine-to-machine -machine communications. Sensors which communicate smart homes, cars which communicate with each other, giving warning of hazards, of, of um, skiddy roads, of accidents. We have devices which communicate to each other. We have containers which might be supervised. We have communication inside containers telling about the goods which are inside. We might have 
uh, transport and production logistic goods which communicate with each other. We see that in production, industry 4.0, we see a lot of communication coming up. This communication is substantially different than the communication which we have at, up to now. If we talk about mobile devices using uh, video downloading, we optimize mobile networks like um, LTE and 3G in a way that we um, have the best performance in means of data rate and um, latency. In machine type communication, we might have applications which have a very high requirements on very low um, delay, but the data volume typically is rather low. So we see that on the other side, in machine to machine type communication, we have the, um, communication applications like car communication, where you need a high reliability, a low latency, but let, little data rate. You see some sensors and some devices, some smart phones, which would um, cope with delays of few seconds or hours even. And you see some um, applications which might even have high data volumes of a lot of data being transmitted. So we see a high variety of different application requirements. We also see um, a big trend to have uh, more user-generated content. So YouTube, Facebook, all the things where we provide our content and um, put it to the network to be shared is changing the direction of the traffic tremendously. And then we have to think about um, what is um, important for the future. Secu security and privacy is an important issue because the internet has such a big um, importance for private and business life. We have to think about energy efficiency, um, in particular if you think about mobile devices. So we have to think different for the future um, network and future internet. How can we cope with all these new requirements? If we go back in history, we know that um, the internet was designed in the 60s, 70s, the IP protocols was done in the 80s, in the early 80s, and since then we have a, s a slow, um, so um, improvement of the protocol itself. Um, the main thing what we have is the IP protocol being um, the major, uh, uh, the simplicity uh, which allows us to add different um, network topologies, network um, so um, ne networking technologies like fiber copper radio. We have different um, um, access schemes. We have different um, protocols on the higher layer, and we add features and functions to um, address the, the, um, the trends and the requirements of today. So we, we have to find means of um, supporting mobile nodes. We have to make it more secure than it was in the beginning. We discuss about quality of service. How can we do that? The internet itself was never defined or de designed to have a quality of service support. So we have something like a best effort service and we need to support it for our video streams and multimedia applications. And of course, we also have to think what do we have sufficient number of addresses if we talk about billions of devices, also for uh, machine type communications. So concluding the internet has become more and more complicated and much harder to manage. And we have to think about how can we do. And that is where future internet architectures come into the play. We can talk about architectures which evolve over time and increase the um, performance and the quality of the network gradually. And there we have software-defined networking and overlay networks, which I will both introduce in the next slides. And we have clean state architectures where we say, how would we do it if we don't have to think about the burden of the past history and internet architectures and do something new? And there we would talk about information-centric networking, and which is a substantially different approach than before. Coming to the first evolutionary approach is software-defined networking. And here the idea is that the network control is decoupled from the forwarding functions and the network control is directly programmable. So instead of having one device uh, which is vendor specific, we can decouple the forwarding function which needs to be highly performant from the network control which you can decouple and unif uh, unify. The network intelligence is then centralized in the software based controller and we can manage the network and secure it by automated software. That's the basic idea of software-defined networking, which we'll introduce in the basic part as well. If you talk about overlay network, we basically decide, design a network on top of the existing internet. So we do a network which is di different, which allows quality of service and whatever we want to do on top of another network. The no nodes in the overlay network are connected via virtual links, realized by real networks, uh, by real network links, and um, for example, we, with that we can do a, s a split 
of the IP address, giving the location and an identifier for the application. And that's what we call locator identifier separation protocol, like LISP. If we go for the clean state approaches, the most exciting one are information centering networks. The idea here is that we typically are not relying, relying on, or we don't really want to communicate to a machine, we want to get the information. And we put the information as the focal point of the network. So if you want to have news, for example, BBC news, we don't really care where it is. We care that this is the last edition of the news. It's correct and authenticated. And we don't really care if that is cached on a device, a node nearby, or if it's on the BBC servers. And then we talk about the content-centric networking as a concrete variation of ICN, and that also is something we will introduce in much more detail in the basic module of the course. So what do we do? We have a module structure in Colibri. Um, we have a basic level where we give an overview and basic knowledge on these three future internet architectures, which I just have introduced. We do video lectures, additional reading materials, and some exercise. And in the advanced level, we have a tutorial where you can play with SDN in a mini-net emulator, and you work in teams of two or three students. Each of you get, or each team gets a scientific paper assigned, and you read the paper, discuss it in the team, summarize the paper, and assess the work of other teams. And now it's time to revisit what I've just been introducing.